You are listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Bonnie's in the shotgun, looking downfield, and then throws. It is up in the air to the goal line. Bounces. What a catch! What a catch by Duke Williams! Touchdown, Eskimos! Bryant Mitchell! It's going to be intercepted. Arjun Colhoun! Mike appears to be a CFL encyclopedia. Welcome back to the Turf District for the Eskimo Empire podcast, brought to you by United Construction Company. You can find all that they do at unitedconstruction.ca, and you can check us out as well at eskempire.ca. All of our social media channels are there, the amazing blogs, and of course, all of the show links. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm joined as always by Superfan Mike. Hi. Nice. And (laughs) Jedi Webmaster Kayla. Hi. How are you? Meh. (laughs) <laughs> Man, you're t- okay, that good, eh? You're All not right. under oath. You can lie. What? You're not under oath. You can lie. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how. I'm fantastic. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I guess uh, that kind of leads in. We should talk about anything else that we did this last weekend. Um, anybody see Ant Man and Wasp? No. no. Mm. Anybody playing Marvel Strike or? What's no, Marvel uh, Strike? That, so no, then okay. <laughs> um, I know. Let's talk about the Sheets show. We oh, were on awesome. the Sheets show last week. Um, if you missed it in the 630 Chad Audio Vault, uh, July 8th at 5 p.m., uh, Chris ah. Sheets was kind enough to have the three of us in there. To, 519 uh, to be precise. Oh, 519 <laughs> to be precise. Yeah, thank you, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we just chatted some Eskimo football and, and the podcast and all that. I, I thought it was a blast. Mm. It was before this game, so we were in a great mood. We were in a fantastic <laughs> mood. Oh, yeah, yeah was, we were still it? riding like, off the beach. DC win. Right. So it was it's great. Like, what the heck? That was on Sunday, Mike. What are you doing? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. We, we pre-recorded it. Yeah. But the, I think the best part was, though, we're all there and we're all in our um, work, Finery. Like, work attire, so none of us are wearing green and gold. And we're just we look very <laughs> dapper. <laughs> yes, well, odd. we dress up for these things. You told me it was the new outfit. We are professionals. <laughs> With two apps. That's correct. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so thanks again to uh, Chris Sheets for having us. Uh, I, I thought it was a blast, and, and I love chatting with him. So that yeah. was good. Uh, let's uh, let's get right into introducing our guest, shall we? Yes, um, returning to the podcast once again, it is featured fan Joe. How you doing, man? Not bad. Good. Thank you for coming back. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, of course, no problem. Uh, I wanted to talk to you when we were all chatting that uh, about the the Global News All In Show. Did you catch that on the weekend? I, I have it. No, uh, and obviously I have to go watch it now because Kayla's got some stuff on there and and, and that. But no, it's 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 a. I think it's a great thing that they're trying to promote the game more and promote the team more. Did you put some stuff? Submit no, some stuff? No, no, I I don't do anything. As much as I am on social media. <laughs> I, I don't, don't do, do anything, anything social media. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I, yeah. I don't. I, <laughs> I'm not a picture guy. I hate having my phone. I hate I, I hate taking oh, – I take pictures of food and my kid. Okay. So, yeah, but that's, that could work. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's uh, how you get ready. He's not a joiner. No. No, no, not really in there. All right. Well, I'm sure they'll do it again. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's a one-off kind of a thing. They I might. don't think so. I think it was kind of neat, though, because yeah. they now can incorporate the Ched call and Yeah, that was, real, that was my favorite and, part, I think, yeah. seeing behind the scenes and just Morley's reaction to some of those stuff was hilarious. The video, yeah. yeah that, that was really cool, actually. Yeah, I thought that was really <laughs> well, neat. Now I have to go watch it. Yes, and, you do. Uh, Hold and, on, I'll just pull it up. Yeah, just pull it up. <laughs> and uh, I did like that they're like every stage of the game like they had obviously all the people prepping and then the part of the game and then everybody leaving and it was, I thought it was yeah yeah, yeah. That oh. too yeah but I I just thought it was it was kind of a neat way to get a little bit of a feel of what the experience is about going to the stadium yeah and and Kayla you said you got a couple of your shots in there yeah so yeah. that's yeah. cool yeah it is Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and there was lots of Coach Vic. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Lord Touchdown. Lord yeah. Touchdown. A uh, little bit. Uh, Cheryl, uh, Shirley. Shirley. Shirley had some, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, Liam or something. Yeah, that was fantastic. So I, I, I really liked having all the different – and it's kind of neat as – Somebody who goes to a lot of games, you're like, hey, I know that guy, and I know that guy, yeah. and I know that yeah. guy. Yeah. That's kind of that, it's kind of a neat thing, right? Yeah, so. the Rileys as well, coming from Montana, which up is and, awesome, and yeah. their little routine, and it's kind of funny because we were watching 
uh, not later. We didn't watch the live, but we watched it uh, on video after. Yeah. And just seeing them stopping in Nanton and going to that candy store we always go to. Absolutely. Which yeah. Which is very cool. If you're I'm going like, through hey. Nanton, you have to stop there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that was pre- predominantly, because again, I haven't watched it. That was predominantly the, the Hamilton game. Yes. That was yeah. just the Hamilton yeah. game. So yes. that was the game that as I was walking through the tailgate to get to your guys' booth, um, there was a. I don't want to say elderly couple. They're probably in their 60s mm-hmm. walking ahead of me. And the lady just happened to me because she obviously recognized Mike Riley's dad. And she's like, that's Mike Riley's dad. I'm like, yeah, we all know who that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody knows who Mike Riley's dad is. <laughs> and I, but I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen him up close. And yeah. I walked by and, you know, he kind of gave me a nod. And I'm like, you know, how you doing? But, yeah, if you stood them side by side and covered up the hair. Yeah. Oh, I know. They're dead ringers for each other. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mike Riley's dad. Well, and he, yeah, they, and they always come down to the tailgate. Like they always walk yeah. through the yeah. tailgate, yeah, which they're... is fantastic. I mean, we got to talk to him the very first tailgate. Yes. Uh, and since then, we've just kind of seen him in passing. But it's still, it's very cool, and, and people know who he is. Like it's, uh, I think that's just that's awesome. What I love about the game. tailgate is you see them, and you also see. I mean, Andrew Jones has walked through yep. there. Tom Wilkinson's been there. Obviously, a couple yeah. weeks ago, we had uh, Blake and yep. Morley were there, Blake Dermott. Yeah. Yeah, right and outside. Dave got there, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. So that that's really cool. Yeah, it's nice when that we get all those guys coming down. And actually, it just increases more the tailgate even more fun, right? Yeah. I thought it was, well, I thought it was fantastic. Going back to the video that, that Global put out, it, it, it you said, you know, going as someone that goes to the game every game. Yeah. And you, you see these people day after, sure. game after game, and you get to know them. But I think it's good that it, they're trying to promote it for people that, don't go to every game mm-hmm. and see what is there. Like, right. like there is the tailgating now. There are these, you know, these. You always see the same people, even standing in the up top underneath the scoreboard, over mm-hmm. this, and things yes. like that. And um, I mean, we have our West of Us thing where we see people. We get to you know chat and talk right. the game and catch up with each other and yeah, meet people that you know. You guys have people from Calgary coming up and Saskatchewan and things yeah, like very that. true. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they show up to West of Us or the tailgate. So I mean, it's. It's kind of it's it's bringing everybody together. Yeah, and exactly. That's, uh, I love that feeling, and hopefully that actually it's gets out. It's not just the to, game, right? All exactly. connected. There's everything all, leading right. up to the game and yeah. after the game and during the game and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, absolutely. So I I, I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Uh, okay, a couple of ask news points. I just wanted to uh, bring up here before we talk about that game um but uh the edmonton eskimos are now partnering with edmonton libraries over the summer that's cool i think that's pretty cool different ask players and cheer team going to different libraries and and reading with kids and promoting yeah. re- i thought just fantastic way to do Man, that we should ask to be a part of that i would totally be pumped for that <laughs> you know you could just go to the library and uh, sit i want to be a part of the eskimos <laughs> joe god <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I Does can that already to throw you into the air. Or... <laughs> no, no, keep me grounded. No touching. Okay, okay. yeah, the, the... We, we've established this <laughs> off air, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> off mic. You no established touch. that with a lot of people. Too, yeah, I that's think. True, that's yeah. just I'm just saying it out loud. Except for photo time, then I'm like faking. Yeah, that's a, everybody smile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing was is that uh, they announced the uh, the fundraising that was done for support the troops with the bandanas yes. and things uh, over twenty six thousand uh, dollars <laughs> raised. So once again. Uh, the Empire coming through with a, a, a big number to support a great cause. I love the bandanas too. Yeah. They're great. I, I use mine all the time, like every day after work. I'm like, whoosh, yeah. put my hair up. All right. Let's uh, talk about the game, shall we? Um, uh, well, we? And the interesting thing is, is that um, I'm not sure how much talking there will be or how much ranting there will be, but we'll... Uh, Can you insert the crickets uh, right about here? <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Esks lose uh, 22-17 to the Toronto Argonauts. Um, so we'll, let's break this down like we normally do, and we'll start off this time uh, trying to find some positive. We'll start with the good. So, Joe, what did you have as far as good I, I did appreciate by the way when you sent me the picture saying <laughs> i'm notes. prepping for the <laughs> podcast and his his good was yikes empty. had some and his wtf had some but the good was empty so now i, I did take your advice i did put duke i mean okay, he's, he's yes. been the one consistent thing um mike riley i mean but i mean that's that's you know getting repetitive and saying that the guy's 
good at playing football. I mean, he threw for almost 400 yards in a, in a losing effort. Yeah, yeah, he had he had, and still had 70 percent completion rate. Yeah, it, he's 370 just so yards and a touchdown. Right, yeah. and he did have the one interception. Um, Which but really probably wasn't his fault. Not entirely. No, no, no. But I blame WD forty. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. But he does. Um, he, he still he had a good game in between the twenties. Well, and, and that's great. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, that's not wrong, right? We're no. doing positives right now. I know. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's true. Thank happy you. Thoughts. That the good good reminder. Go Kayla. to my happy place. Good reminder. <laughs> um, a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kayla, do you have a, a good in this game? I'm I'm looking for <laughs> no, 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 I'm looking I'm for pressures for one. I she, thought they don't they, they don't do record they don't do, quarterback pressures how anymore. Dare they? Because they said they couldn't really determine what's actually a pressure and what isn't. It was too subjective. Well, I can yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, actually, I I liked. Obviously, we love having Quaco in the D line, but I thought they did pretty okay without him. They mm-hmm. did. A, Alex Bazzi? I was going to say, I think oh, that was Bazzi's best game as an Eskimo. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. She's slowly coming around. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. I was just like, ah. I'm smiling if we say <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, this is Sweet. audio. That's Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um. No, I, yeah, just watching him, even last game, like, he, he definitely improved this game, but I'm just like, thank you. We needed, like... Obviously, we have some that we love. We love Kwaku so much, but it's good to have... You can't just have one solid guy. And I mean, even Kwaku was kind of, you know, a couple games having a rough having a rough night. But um, he was my highlight of the game, for okay. sure. Yeah. Perfect. Super fan. Uh, I mean, I talked about it on the, on the Periscope, seeing uh, one of our favorites, Mark Milk Truck Mackie, getting mm-hmm. that sack. Uh, his first professional sack, which is absolutely fantastic, in his first game back. Yes, uh, I think he just proved that you know he definitely fits in on this defense. Yeah, he's had a couple of training camps under his belt now uh, under Benavides, and um, uh, I mean for all the the stick that our our defense get, we we held a team to twenty points in their home, and yeah. this vaunted offense. We'll talk about that later. Um, that's the next topic. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. definitely the that's next, next topic yeah. after. Um, that it gave the offense a chance to win. And yeah, uh, for a defense, even though people complain about the soft zone or whatever, you, you held a team to twenty so points in their barn. That's got to be a win. Yeah. Returns. Sorry. That's okay. I can hear all that though. I'm like, uh, sorry. That's yeah. good. Oh, Joe. <laughs> that's live mics. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you're right, super fan. I mean, and I, I, I tend to think that too. Is that we. We as Eskimo fans in the last couple of years have have gone off on the defense, and the defense yeah. has had bad games. There's no doubt oh, about no it. Question. Oh. And, and it's not like they're perfect. Everyone took their turn this game. I, I do think that the like the last two games, twenty three and twenty points, like that to, on, on, for a defense. That's what you ask for. You ask to keep the team twenty or under. Yeah. And if you can do that, then you should win the game. The only Basically. problem is so. they do that halfway through the game, and then the last. Well, the last quarter, they just... But again, you held them to 20 points, and if our offense was able to score on half of the chances they had... Well, yes. yeah, it comes down to runaway. the whole team. Yeah, exactly. Then it wouldn't even have been, it wouldn't have even been a problem, right? So I think, that, I think that, that is a difference. The big thing going on the whole defense thing is that they came out, Toronto scored, you know... 12, 12 points. Quick, 12 quick points and within the first nothing. 10 minutes. The, the, and then the first then they one is score. on the defense. The second one, they turned over the ball in their own zone. Yeah, like, I, exactly. Like, so. You can't put, like, the defense is already just, they yeah, just ready. got off the field. Yeah. Now they're back on the field with a short field. Yeah. That, that, and, and, I mean, yeah, can't really, they didn't score yeah. again until the fourth quarter. Right. That's right. right. But that's just it. It's like you can't just lay off, like, put on the brakes and, like, stop everyone and then just be like... But this fourth quarter, but even the fourth not. quarter, they really didn't. Well, they let eight points, and that's what won the game. It was a touchdown and a two point convert. So it's yeah, which, which won the yeah. game? Yeah. It was one score, and it was, yeah. and it was with you know four minutes left in the game, and and like I, I I'm oh well, uh, let me do my good first, and then I'll get to the yeah. to the yikes part because the good part for me, even though it se- doesn't probably seem that way, was we had no sacks. We gave yep. up no sacks yep. for this game. Yep. Yep. Our offensive line gave up no sacks. Yep. Now, they didn't open holes for running either, but they gave up no sacks, and we were throwing the ball a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do want to give some credit. I think that is a, a mm-hmm. good part in this game. Protecting Riley is a must. So 
now I'm going to go back to the point you were just talking about in in in, in the yikes part. It, it's it's a bad time to give up a touchdown. Absolutely, with four minutes left. I mean, if you really want to sit down and get particular about it, or if you want to look at it this way. And I mean, I, I love Franklin, you know that, but Franklin basically Riley'd us. Yeah. <laughs> where he, yeah. Did, he oh. didn't do a whole lot. And then that last fourth <laughs> that, <laughs> that drive, he was nailing everybody. It was mm-hmm. a, a, like, yeah, oh my. Um, it was a nice, <laughs> but he, he was just, all the throws were there and, and they started going downfield on the long ball and it worked. Riley's and, just like, crap. <laughs> like, I know. And, and the thing is, is that's when all of those other times where you didn't have where you didn't finish you didn't capitalize it just came back to yeah, bite you in the bottom. bite them right yeah. so i think if i was going to go with my my yikes that's probably what it is is the fact that that franklin looked good but he rallied us the circle is now complete when i left you i was but the learner now i am the master <laughs> and we and and that last drive i mean that was so frustrating as a, as an Eskimo fan. So, your yikes, super fan. Oh, I mean, there's so many penalties, yeah. penalties, mm. and just see, I put that in my worst yeah. time. Um, I, you know, I, I was gonna think of that as the last category, but honestly, penalties you should be able to overcome, um, especially yeah. when some of them were so much earlier. But yeah. I had to tell you, this streak that uh, a certain number twenty six has got going on, where he's just taking a bad penalty every game like that. Every, okay, so we've played four games, yes. and in every game he has taken either an objectionable conduct or an unnecessary roughness yeah. that is completely useless. Yes. There's no reason to do it. Yeah. Absolutely unnecessary. zero. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it always sends, seems to be at a point where it puts us in a damn hole. Like, and, it pisses me off and so then much. Dupuis, I mean, when he came <sighs> off after the That's, second one, yeah. they, you could actually hear someone on the sidelines saying, another one, Dupuis? Like, well, but the first one was holding, yep. which was, but it nullified, bad, but it nullified a TD. Yeah. And the second one wasn't, was an uh, unnecessary roughness yes. that pushed back another huge game. And yeah. that was which one way was after that? the, that was way after the play it was after and, the and it was whistle nowhere, and he shoved the guy and down. It was nowhere near the actual nowhere. play. It was on the other side of the field, right? Nowhere so. near. I don't remember that one. It, yeah. it wasn't was on camp. It was it was in the third it was in quarter, the third quarter, quarter I believe yeah. or fourth quarter it might, might have even been because yeah. we yeah we were driving the yeah, other we were way going, yeah, so we got a first down quarter, and got a first down and he shoved the guy <gasps> right. down and it brought the ball all the way the frig back yeah. like what and then what, we ended up having a punt I was zoning yeah. out <laughs> yeah well at that point I think a lot of us were but I I mean we had twelve penalties for one hundred and twenty six yards yeah uh, but most of those the objectionable it's conduct roughnings and too. holding. Like, oh, my good and Lord. And the P.I., yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, the offensive P.I., I mean? Yeah. Yeah, which it was. There's no doubt yeah, about yeah. it. It was offensive pass interference. But, yeah, the, the, uh, but the, the discipline was just not there at all. Yeah, one thing I will say, though, is a lot of people I've heard, and this has been the controversial thing, is what does everyone think of the Moss punting with two and a half minutes left? Okay, so... Okay, well, here's here's my thought on it, mm-hmm. uh, and I know Kayla, you won't, you're not going to agree with me, but the defense to that point had held, and the offense hadn't been able to do anything. And the offense and hadn't and been able to do anything. So third and eight, I say you punted and and you trust you get the ball back. Yeah, you I mean, you've got to put that faith in your defense to get the ball back. Yeah, I, I don't think you you don't want to turn it over on your own side of the field. I that, mean, that that's point, my game's thought. over. Yeah, yeah, See, you're just giving it up. That's <laughs> was going to shock you, but I agree. Okay. I have my faith in our defense. I don't have faith in Benny. <laughs> oh well, but Benny runs the defense. But he just I I have faith in our players, and I think that they can actually do something. But I don't think he, Benny plays to their capabilities as well. Like I I just okay. that's how I feel. I just don't like I saw what I saw in training, in training camp, right. and I don't see what I saw in training camp right now. I see bits and pieces of it, but, but five of those players aren't on the field. Well, and that's just that's that's f- part of Drew, the problem. Yeah, exactly. Witch, who are you? <laughs> because that's the problem. If we had, witch. I mean, at that yes. point when we were in training camp, we were looking and thinking this secondary is going to be a yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now it's just kind of like. And now when three or four, I of think those I'm guys just gone, so petty about it. Sure. Because I was the one. Our defense, and now it's like. Now you're like our defense. <laughs> 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 you know me I so hope well. everybody can hear the change and that's going to be a fun one to chat about. Um, 
Joe, Joe, did you have a yikes in this game? Uh, I'm cowering in the corner over here. From the <laughs> here but, um, uh, Welcome to the angry turf I, I, district. I had the the Chris Edwards. Oh, we're, we're yes. saying names. Sorry. I yeah. Don't know. Number twenty six. Nope, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's um, number twenty six now. Yeah. yeah. Um, that that was getting a little inferior. I didn't even think if you go back, he had. I don't know if he had one in the East final yep, sure or the did. West final last year. Yep. So that's five and he games. He had one the game before Four. that. When so he did I mean, the throat you could probably go back so. at least five, six games in going back to last season yeah. where he's cost us at least one in a row. Yeah, in a row. Um, but my biggest thing was the red zone efficiency. Our, our, yes. Uh, as I said before, I believe it was on the Periscope. I said that it was um, very un Riley like to to. Yeah. To stumble in the red zone and not be, yeah, not not, not even every get, time. like every time and yep. and going back to what we were talking about with the penalties, the it, when when CJ did run that one in and it was called back on the holding, you could see in his eyes like as he's walking back because the camera was on him like he was inside. You, you, you just the expression on his face wasn't there, but you could just see in his eyes that he was like, you know. Fire trucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, yeah. It's he, like nothing could go right in the game. No. So, right. um, we'll say it for you, CJ. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was definitely the red zone. And I mentioned before they have to improve on that this week if they want to succeed. And I, and I fully think they will. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I didn't mean to skip over you. Kayla, oh, no, but that's y- fine. Do you have a yikes? Uh, I, I do. It's not, it's game related, but personally game related. Mm-hmm. When Mondo got injured, I, w- that is like, I don't swear uh. a lot. But when he went down, I was like, fire trucker. And oh, I sl- I'm leaving that in. <laughs> I slammed the table and I was like, fire trucker. Yeah. Because that's, y'all know how I feel about Mondo. Uh, yeah. And then I just, another injury. But he came back, right? He, he did. Back yeah, he was injured. So, so my yikes. Really Everyone kinda, that was injured did come yes. back. Yeah. Game, but it was still goodness. like that yikes. So I was just like, are you kidding me? It would have been a WTF, but he came back. So, yeah. yeah. The only thing we have to watch is like, even though he came back, Duke came back, we don't know the extent of anything. Of the, yeah. Of the, uh, right. w- yeah. Because Coming they have, back might have done something. Yeah. They, they don't, they don't know. They haven't released like any information on the current. Right, and and t- and tomorrow is yeah. when practice practice opens, so, so we'll, we'll be finding out tomorrow who yeah. is actually going to be Andrew's around. down so, there with his oh, yeah, binoculars. Will be. Yeah, I'm there tomorrow to figure that out. So oh, I'm um, off tomorrow. I don't know if I can. Come oh though. yeah, you, you should come then. It'll be fun. Um, all right, let's go to uh, another fun section for this particular uh, game. Is the what the fire truck? So um, <laughs> Kayla. Do you have a uh, what the fire f- truck for this week? Oh, I did, and I just escaped my mind. It's okay. Come back to me. All please. right, I'll come. Okay. <laughs> All right. So WTF moments, uh, Joe. We'll start with you. Um, well, I, the the in the end zones at BMO. I think we all will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that trade off from real grass to turf is and, and it was, tough, even on someone as experienced as Dwayne Mandrusiak. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was evident, obviously, on that one play with Darrell Walker, and then sure. the right away the end zone. Like he slipped. Yeah. Yes, and that's why I said before, like that that pick really wasn't Riley's fault. because no. I think if it sure. was a natural transition, Darrell would have been a touchdown. He's got a touch, or at least he's fighting for the ball or he's in the air. Yeah. yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Right, like it's not. Um, and I and I had the the air horn guy. Oh, I I agree. I I agree. The air horn. <laughs> Thank guy. you. Yes, because I I I know it. I I understand it wasn't the whole game, but God, that drove me absolutely around the bend. And and uh, everybody is venting on it on Twitter, and somebody actually posted illegal items at BMO Field, and it's pretty much the same across the Every country. Field, yeah. Yes, yeah. And they said air horns, blah blah blah, but. They showed video of the guy, it's a hand pump. and it's a hand pump, right? Yeah. So it's not technically an air, a, horn. an air horn with a CO2. So to his defense, he knows the rules. He yeah. got around there. He fixed the loophole. Yeah. He probably knows that his seat is right next to a microphone or, the, the, or or by, by, the, by one of the parabolics. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing I think is, is less about what he was doing and more about how TSN didn't move the mic. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and I think – I mean there was even people who were in – BMO field that we're tweeting out afterwards saying sorry about that because it was annoying to us too. Like I am a little surprised that uh, by the fourth quarter that security didn't go down say something like yeah. wouldn't you yeah oh absolutely but if it's or not tsn illegal, or something like, yeah that's that's but but, but really if it but if bebo's like the eskimos if if it's ruining fan experiences it's up to the fans at the stadium to go to, and report to, it, yeah to go to the, right. go to security and be like hey listen like this guy with yeah. the air horn yeah. i sit like five rows behind him and he's annoying the exactly. hell out of me um 
I, I want you to do something about it. And yeah. that's a problem. Everyone just goes to Twitter and bitch about it yeah. rather than actually going and, and solving the oh, issue. Absolutely. And then like putting their faces on like a public forum that the, they didn't agree to. Like that's trash. I'm sorry. Like that is absolute trash. You don't do that to someone without their consent. I, I yeah. can, I can kind of relate to this guy because, um, I think it was probably about seven years ago we brought in cowbells to our section. Right. So anytime the, the, the defense has the opposition backed up within the, the 20 on the north end zone mm-hmm. at Commonwealth, and that camera's right there, you can – when you're watching TV and you hear cowbells, that's us. That's, yeah, yeah. Because it's picking up on all the cameras in there. Mm-hmm. But we literally had a woman. She was sitting there the first day we had the thing. They, she was sitting there the entire game with her ears plugged, even when we weren't ringing them because we only rang them on defense. Yeah. And finally, she got up and went and talked to the security guard. The security guard came and talked to us, and he's like, he he told us straight out, just just try not to ring him as much, right? Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with a cowbell, right? right? So it's the same thing as an air horn, right? Yes. Yeah, and and that's true. But you, just even the hey, can you yeah, yeah tone it down a just bit? Tone it. Or again, just move the mics yeah. or something. Yeah. Because that's all you I hear agree. at bomber games yeah. is just a like, cowbell. Yeah. That's all you hear. Yeah. I I I, Beer snake. I love it. Beer snake. <laughs> Do but I, hear, I, I, how do you hear a beer snake? <laughs> is that the, the the cups? Is that the cups? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that a uh, BMO? No, no, that's, no. no, that's, that's a Winnipeg. Oh, sorry. okay. Yeah. Uh, super fan. Oh, I think we've touched on a lot of it. I, I, I noticed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Without making this podcast a three-hour podcast, <laughs> um, I, I, I think those are the sort of the big ones. But just the inefficiency we've seen uh, on on offense, as Joe said. The uh, air horn guy, the the turf monster. Yeah, it's just honestly, it's just depressing to see us playing so poorly when we know that this offense can do so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. I, like like you said, or before we when we were talking off mic or whatever, it's like to have that offense and we know what they're capable of, just not putting up any points. Right. Like we we all everybody in this room expected that team to walk in. We held them to twenty points. We should have. But won we should have won. Yeah. But if yeah, like you said, if you look at the stats, we should have won. We should have won forty to twenty. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. it should have. There were touchdowns. And it's just it was yeah. very frustrating. But yeah. again, when the, the the unfortunate thing when those penalties come when you're getting a long gain or a touchdown or yeah, whatever. It's... Okay, so speaking of a penalty, that's my WTF. There we go. That penalty on Kenny Stafford mm, was the biggest fire trucking penalty I have ever seen. That all depends. We don't know what Be- he said, at, but he but he didn't. He d- I don't. He didn't say anything he when they say, zoomed. He he didn't say anything. Now, where I from what I saw, and again, I'm not a ref, and I'm not standing on the field, and I understand that, but. Uh, and you, the funny part is, you and I just had a conversation during, like, a, a quarter beforehand, where Kenny caught a ball and it was for ten yards, and he did the exact same celebration Spine. where he dropped the ball and he points downfield, and I'm and I was already bitching about it because I'm like, Kenny, it was ten yards, dude. Yeah. Do it when you get a big reception. Yeah, right. Touchdown, whatever. But, but ten yards, seriously, that's your job. Just be happy and mm-hmm. be done. Don't you don't have to celebrate. Don't be Deron yeah. Carter. Yeah. So. Then he he catches. I know that's the joke. <laughs> so then he catches and has a great big one, and it's and it actually deserves a celebration. He drops the ball straight down. The ball hits an Argo player, and they flag him for it. Yeah. but that's what it says in the rules. Uh, but that's ridiculous. I thought and it was if you, the rule. if you throw that's it ri- at a, like if you're intentionally. But if you but it dropped it and it hit the Argo yeah. player, it, it, which it, then it's... Wilder does the same thing in that fourth quarter. Yeah, no call. Saying. I, and I'm like, I think I think I think Dave or Morley crap. brought that up on the after show. Like, yeah, that was crap. Or maybe like, it was Blake Dermott. One of them, somebody on the after show brought it up. I was yeah. listening to it, and they said that like, how is that a penalty when it's not called on Wilder? Right? It, it has like, to be both ways. If you're yeah. going to call it, like that was ridiculous. So it is ridiculous to me. That was that was my WTF. I was so angry for Kenny because I could. I mean, he was incensed, and sure. I, but I totally get it. I'm like, that's ridiculous. But the thing is, too, is like, as long as he doesn't, you know, get that ten yard. It was only ten yards. We it was a fifth. Yard gain. It was, what was fifteen? Wasn't it a fifteen yard penalty? No, it was only ten. Oh, objectionable conduct is. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was 15. Oh, okay. It was. It backed him up ten, so it was a forty yeah. yard gain. But at least he didn't say something after that fact, didn't, arguing with true. the ref to get another fifteen to right. you know, basically right. half that distance. Right. So, right. yeah. Um, so that was that was pretty. Yeah. Anyway, that was my moment. I was upset about it. So I was upset about a lot of things, but that one really ticked me off. <laughs> Dirty Turkish back flat. Co-host, because it's co-host. Yeah, because it's co-host, Kenny. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. 
I yeah, I know I I I I don't I honestly don't know, but my um I kind of have two WTFs. Okay. They're because they're, they're they're not like rip my hair out, but okay. there's something. Okay. So I don't know why I, I love the snore. <laughs> I don't know that, why I that snore, was... but that's DNA. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's gonna lead the podcast. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Everybody snort now. <sighs> Um, is uh, when okay? A the holding penalties are ri- ridiculous. Like, come on, like yep. you're professionals. Let's let's smarten up. Oh my gosh! Before I come down there and slap you, <laughs> and then arguing the well. fact of it when like Dupuis, he was definitely like, like wait, like what do you like? What did I do? What did I do? It's like clearly you're holding. You're doing this. You're doing clearly. Stop arguing. You're not going to make it wor- worse or make it any better by arguing. Just get off the field. Well, he's French. He's very expressive. I'm French. <laughs> I, I should know that. But if I do it wrong, I'm just like, yeah, oh, I'm but, embarrassed. But, I don't. But it's. I've always been told, or I've been told. You're stealing my thunder, Joe. I'm not done. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no, but I'm. I'm, I'm just going to say, touch. like, yeah, you can. You, sh- sh- <laughs> I messed him up <laughs> with my intention. You, you can, you can. A ref could probably call holding on every single play. Yes. Yeah, if 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 they really wanted to, so they let a lot go. But when when a holding is called, I, I really find holding isn't is one of those penalties where there is no gray zone. It's black or white. And when you see it on the replay, it's like, yeah, like when he's twisting the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Calling yeah. it, I think, is where it becomes subjective. Yes. Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. Like, the refs are, are, are calling it that black and white. They're like, I'm going to call that one because, like, yeah, if I don't, I'm going to take more flack for it than, than if I do, right? But so did they just pick on certain players? Because it's like most no. of the same players usually get it because... Well, it's obviously going to be the offensive line guys that are, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, the but guys I've that never, are blocking, Maybe right? it's just me, but I don't see Justin Sorensen getting a lot of penalties. Well, he's the center, and he's usually probably helping out with the double teams, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, But you can yeah. still get a penalty. Yeah, but it's going to be, it's going to be more so the guards. Offense. Exactly, and the guards. exactly. Yeah. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> he probably wouldn't even fit in this room, would he? Oh, no, he'd fit in. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. not that he just ducks. He's more than welcome. Yeah. <laughs> beer on tap. Yeah, uh, it's great. Yeah. What? Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? There's beer on tap? Kind of. Yeah, just hidden from you. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. There's beer and there are taps. That's right. In the bathroom or on the corner. Yeah, exactly. Okay. My biggest WTF is no surprise to anyone. My bat signal did not work. <laughs> yes. I have to replace the lights because okay. it kind of it flickered week. like twice and then it went out. Cause Let's go, Commissioner Kayla. <laughs> <It's> go- <laughs> I failed Kayla. you all. Uh, that's, a, that's all right. It happens. That's well, I want to change my Twitter name to that. Thanks, Mike. Commis- <laughs> oh, you should. Yeah, Commissioner, Commissioner Kayla. Kayla. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's move on from this and uh, let's get to our fan vote for this week, yeah. uh, which we asked which Canadian player should we catch up with this week, and uh, the winner of the vote, Natea J. Yes. So, uh, let's go to him. We're joined by wide receiver Natea J. How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, nice day indoors uh, for the first time this year, I think. Uh, not too bad. Uh, how about yourself? Well, I'm good. But I, how do you find it? practicing in here as compared to outside on the turf is it that much different yeah it's a lot different the air is uh, kind of stale you find uh it's extremely hot and humid uh compared yeah. to outside and you know you know the deep balls are kind of different because you got to watch out for the walls and stuff right <laughs> so it's just more of a confined space and you know it's not really a realistic look to uh outside but you know we got to do what we got to do with yeah, well, you know, if there's going to be lightning, it's right. probably good that you're right. practicing exactly. it, 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 the, the benefit of having this. Yeah, exactly. we, we will take that. So tell us a little bit, how's the uh, season been for you so far? You're, you're playing more of a role now on the offense, which we're loving to see. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, making plays still on special teams. So how, how's that uh, been different for you? Uh, it's been different. Like you said, I I'm, I'm have more of a role on the offense, and uh, it's exactly what I wanted. I mean, last year I was you know, primarily a special teams player, and this year I came in wanted to do both, you know, still contribute on special teams and have an impact on offense as well. And, you know, I'm happy they're giving me an opportunity uh, to, to fulfill that. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to take it, with it, uh, take it and run with it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now, you're a kid in Mississauga. Yeah. Um, how do you get into football? When did you start? You know what? My best friend, uh, Chris Ozzetti, uh, who is now uh, a scout for the Miami Dolphins, he uh, he got me into football. You know, I was, we were hanging out all the time in the summer times, and uh, he started. His dad was a coach, so when he started playing football, that's pretty much when I started. So I was about uh, 12 years old, and okay. yeah, I didn't want to lose my friend. He was always going to practice, and I had no one to play with. So I was like, asked my parents, and they let me join. They were reluctant for a while because they're like, football is dangerous. But I try to convince them I have nobody to play with. So 
you know, I ended up going, uh, you know, trying out for football and uh, haven't stopped since. So, yeah, my boy Chris was there. He got me started. Well, and you're a fast little guy, so yeah. you can make sure you don't get hit so All hard. Right. That's what I, that was my main <laughs> argument. I was like, Dad, I'm fast. I've been playing soccer my whole life. No one can catch me, so I'm going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good – now, did you ever play anything other than receiver? Or? Uh, no. Uh, you know, watching football receiver is always my – the position that I, I am stuck to watch – all the great guys, I was just, just like Randy Moss, you know, uh, uh, Steve Smith, all those guys, I was just watching them all the time. And uh, there's nothing I, I, I love more than just catching the ball and scoring. So I'd never played any other position. When I was little, little, like Pee Wee, they, they tried to put me at linebacker, Ooh, okay. and they found out quickly that it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up getting moved to DB, and then they still they still thought twice about that, and they moved to receiver, and they, they saw that I was happy. So <laughs> it worked out for me. <laughs> That's that is so perfect. So now, when you come into the CFL, yeah. uh, who were your mentors? Who were the guys that uh, kind of helped you along to get to where you are now? Yeah, so I came in uh, 2014 uh, on Toronto with uh, you know guys like Andre Dury, Chad Owens, uh, you know Trevor Harris was on that team, and yeah. he, you know he did a lot of talking to me. So it was great. Matt Black, uh, James Yurchuk, guys like that, the older vets were who were in the community a lot, and I kind of knew before. A guy like Andre Dory, he's from Mississauga, so yeah. I knew him before I got on the team. And once I got on the team, it was he was like taking me by the uh, shoulder, showing me the way. And uh, you know, I was thankful to have guys like that because you know, you kinda, especially with Chad Owens, you kind of saw how to work. You know, the guy he, each practice he's going a hundred miles an hour. You know, the fine Hawaiian. So him, Dory Owens, uh, guys like that. You know, uh, Jason Barnes, you might know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's yes, another guy. Him. Yeah, yes. he took me under his wing. Uh, a guy like Spencer Waters, well, I remember. So guys, guys like that really showed me like the CFL and uh, what it took to, to kind of last in this league. Awesome. And now that you've been around for a number of years, are you starting to do that with some of the younger guys? Or you look at Nate Bahar yeah. in his second year and all these types of things? It's funny that you say that. Yeah, it's, you know, in this offseason, me and Nate, you know, talked a lot because, you know, I saw some of the things he was going through and I and that was the same, similar things I was going through when I was younger, right? So I uh, we talked a lot and I found myself in that kind of, role as in uh you know a little bit of a mentor a little bit of a you know a brother that's kind of been there you know to kind of tell you you know it's gonna be okay you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah. you know i think i think uh it's funny how things come full circle and and uh, it's funny how like i find myself in more of that role now and i can look back to my experience and you know kind of tell these guys it's, it's really gonna be okay yeah Oh, that's fantastic. All right, let's get to know you a little better outside of football. Uh, what, what, what do you like to do when you're not practicing or playing? Uh, I'm, I love watching sports. You know, as a kid, I played, like I said, I played soccer, I played football, I played baseball, I played basketball. Any sport, you name it, it is, uh, I'm a sports guy. So, you know, love watching sports uh, outside of football. You know, I have a little daughter now, yeah. so I'm doing all the little kid things, you know. So, you know, we're going to the park, we're going to the splash pad, we're going to the pool. You know, so uh, that's that's more taking up most of my time now. Uh, but before, you know, video games, you know, I live with Blair, uh, okay. Blair Smith. So, you know, video games is our thing. Um, and I'm, I'm a homebody. So Netflix, video games and uh, just chilling, man. Just love chilling, putting the feet up. Uh, and just watch the sports. That's that's me. That, that, nothing wrong with yeah. that. Nothing wrong with that. What uh, what kind of stuff are you watching on Netflix? Right now, um, so I was a big Twenty Four guy. I got okay. into prison break. Uh, you know, went went a few different places. But now, this, uh, I started back watching Homeland. Oh, I don't okay. know if you heard it. So yeah. Yeah. I know I, I saw. I was looking it up. I know it won a couple awards and I, and it had the same executive producers as uh, Twenty Four. So yeah. I started watching it. And now I'm hooked on it. So I'm on I'm on season three. <laughs> And like I, I'm gonna go downstairs, get in the cold tub, and and I'll be watching that. So, yeah, right now my homeland. Um, that's a pretty good show for me right now. I can't complain. Awesome. And uh, what about music? What do you like to listen to? Um, obviously like like rap, like hip hop. Not too much R and B. I don't know. I've, ever since I've been a kid, uh, my parents love R and B, but I, I just never got into it. Uh, we have White Boy Wednesdays, which I do enjoy. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's. You know, because it opens me up to, like, a bunch of music I wouldn't listen to on my own. Yeah. So, like, the guys, White Boy Wednesdays, all the white artists in the world, they play. And I'm a pretty big fan of White Boy Wednesdays. So, yeah, musically, I only get it once, once a week. So, White Boy Wednesdays is my, one of my favorite days of the week because I get exposed to new music. But other than that, I'm rap, hip-hop. You know, Drake's pretty big right now, so all the rap and hip-hop is. 
yeah, we, we hear that answer yeah. fa- fairly often. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, let's 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 say if you weren't playing football, yeah. what do you think you'd want to do? Oh, I would definitely be playing Major League Baseball. I have no really? doubt about it. Yeah, okay. I, be, I have my glove in my in my truck right now. Oh, wow. I'm always ready to go. If a, if a pickup baseball game, like, broke out anywhere, <laughs> I'd be ready to go. I, baseball, I would say, is one of my, my first loves. I, I don't know why. Just watching the Blue Jays. My dad had the... A tape of the 92 93 World Series on VHS. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I wouldn't be watching cartoons. We'd pop that in and I'd just be watching, you know, the not the games, they had like a, a documentary yeah, about like those teams. Yeah. With all yeah. The big and yeah. It just, it yeah. just, it, I was hooked on that. And uh, I just never, never got, I, I played baseball in high school. Uh, I was on the varsity team in grade nine, but just football just, you know, was more of a love. But I'd say if I wasn't playing uh, football right now, I'd play baseball. And if I could go back, I think I would try to do both if I could. You know? <laughs> oh, Bo Jackson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. the CFL. You're yeah. just making me feel old because I watched those those Blue Jay games yeah. live. Like, yeah. that's, you know, yeah. it's, a little, it's a little different. Yeah. Um, okay, now we ask this question sometimes. It's an interesting one. But if you had an hour to spend with anyone, alive or dead, just to talk to them, who would it be and why? An hour to spend with anyone, alive or dead. That is a good question. Let me let me let me think about this for a second because this is very important. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's like this is anyone in the world. Yeah, anyone that you think you might just want to sit and talk with. Has anyone ever said God? No. I would I honestly because I feel like if I got an hour with God and I could ask him all the questions of why would things were happening, what my future was gonna look like, or or, wow. or Jesus Christ, I, I would I would I would take that. I mean, that's I think that's where I'd go with that, and then and then try to figure out. You know what the meaning of life you know all those kind of questions yeah. people think about i think uh that's that's where i'd go with that 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 is fantastic i never thought of that yeah. angle before <laughs> well done that's very good all right now you've been in eskimo now for a couple of years yeah. so the other question that we ask all of our players is what does the eskimo way mean to you Ooh, honestly the eskimo way has meant a lot to me because before i came here uh, i was in toronto and things were a bit different but once i got here you kind of understood the culture that was here, the, the pride that, you know, you get to put on these the yellow and green, and you understood the pride and, you know, just the little things like showing up on time, working hard, being respectful to your teammates and coaches, just being a good person in the community. All those things, you know, you felt that as soon as you walked in the building here. And uh, the Eskimo way, they always talk about it, you know, bone, brotherhood, and na- nasty Eskimos. You know, that is, you know, everything to me. And everybody buys in. And, and when you see, like, the people at the, the top, like the Mike Rowley's, you know, Darrell, you know, JC's buying into the Eskimo way, it just, it just brings everybody up. And, and you feel that the moment you walk there. And I remember when I first got here and I was like, man, this place is special. Like, it's like no other team or no other, uh, like, community I've ever been a part of just because of the way everybody feels from the top to the the top to the bottom uh, feel about the colors, you know, the and the Eskimo name and the Eskimo way, and you know, it's something that you know is truly special, and I'll probably keep with me for the rest of my life, to be honest. Wow, that is, I think you win for best answer so far this year. <laughs> That's pretty that. good. All right, thank you so much for joining us, no and problem. good luck on uh, Friday. I appreciate that, man. Uh, hopefully, we can make some more plays and you know start a new winning streak here. Ah, we know you will. Yeah, we yeah. will. <laughs> Thanks again to Nate for joining us for the uh, interview. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll have a new fan vote out next weekend, so watch for it on Twitter and Facebook, and make sure that you put your votes in on each side. Let's take a really quick break, and we will come back with the Esks history moment. Our pickup. Uh, some fantasy talk and our CFPN game preview. This is Bryant Batman Mitchell, and you're listening to the Empire Podcast. The Eskimo Empire Podcast is brought to you by United Construction Company. As a full-service commercial general contractor, United Construction Company serves large and small-scale commercial, light industrial, and multifamily residential construction projects across Western Canada. UCC is a relationship-focused builder forming a trust and respect that is at the forefront of their commitment to quality, value, and integrity. Visit their website at unitedconstruction.ca to find out more and support them as they support the Empire. You can join the Empire online. 
Find us at eskempire.ca. Check out all the new blogs and then follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For more history, follow at Esk's History on Twitter. And even more of my pics on Esk Empire Photo. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to help the pod grow. Thanks again for listening. Let's get back to the show. All right, thank you for not going anywhere. It is time once again for that treasured moment every week of the Eskimo history moment. Let's hear you cheer and holler for a mighty famous team. Let's hear you roar, you know what for a team that's on the beat. Our voices rise up to the skies, the fans are glad to scream. We love those Eskimos. Welcome back to the Eskimos history moment. Today we're going to look back 34 years to July 11th, 1984. Edmonston trades away punter Paul Hickey for a player to be named later. Hickey became expendable when the Eskimos acquired quarterback punter Johnny Evans, who actually did double duty 11 days later when quarterback Matt Dunnigan couldn't start due to sleeping in his contacts the night before the game. <laughs> what? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> that wow. happened. Okay. While Evans uh, had a decent record of punting with 43-point yard average for 1984, his quarterbacking record was less impressive. Uh, he went 41 of 78, which is 52.6%, and had four touchdowns to seven interceptions, and ultimately let go prior to training camp the following year. This story is more about the player to be named later in the Hickey trade. Uh, he spent 1984 and 1985 with the Rough Rider training camps, but after the trade had a substantially longer career in green and gold, Larry Ruck. Ooh, nice. So Larry Ruck had a successful career with the Saskatoon Hilltop junior team, winning the Rookie of the Year award, and then followed it up by leading the conference in tackles in his second and third year ultimately winning the Most Outstanding Defensive Player Trophy in the Canadian Junior Football League in 1982. In his first year in green and gold, he made an immediate impact, forcing a fumble against Toronto in their end zone to give Edmonton a touchdown in the final seconds of a 25-23 win against the Argonauts in the season opener at Commonwealth. Ruck earned his way into the regular rotation, ultimately playing outside and middle linebacker beside such luminaries as Dan Bass and Willie Pless over his 12-year career with the Eskimos. He amassed 667 tackles, 32 sacks, 15 interceptions, and 19 fumble recoveries, and still to this day holds the team record for most tackles for a loss in a season with 12 in 1992. He also stands 6th all-time in games played in green and gold, which is the most of any defensive player. Larry Ruck was a five-time team selection for the Most Outstanding Canadian and was the West nominee for that award in 1994 and 95. His impact in junior football was equally felt, and in 2007, the CJFL's Most Outstanding Defensive Player Award was renamed in his honour. He was honoured with the spot on the Eskimos' Wall of Honour in 2011, alongside his teammate Sean Fleming, ensuring generations to come will know one of the greatest Canadian linebackers to ever play the game we all love. Thank you again, Superfan. It's always nice to hear about our Canadian linebackers, especially Larry Ruck. Rucked him. Damn near killed him. Fantastic, as it should be. And so many good lines in it's those true. days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, usually we would go to our pick em right here, and uh, we will do the pick em right away. Uh, but I wanted to kind of skip ahead and just set up our game, uh, Argos and Eskimos, this week uh, here at Commonwealth Stadium. So uh, it'll be, of course, Friday. It's at uh, it's an 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock start 7 o'clock this start. one. Uh, Brickfield at Commonwealth Stadium. Be there early uh, for tailgate. Absolutely. Tailgate will be set up sometime around 4 30 quarter to 5 so eh? yeah, between cuz it's 2 hours before at least so. yeah isn't the game at 8 no, no 7 o'clock. i'm glad you said something there you go yeah Ooh, yeah get there early exactly got to listen every moment so what's uh, on the menu oh this but the menu this week super fan tacos in a bag yes 
going to be so tasty. Oh, I yeah. can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Um, now, yes. stats minute for this game from Uncle BD. So the Esks are 7 and 3 on games that are played on Friday the 13th. Nice. Um, they are current two-game win streak and a four-game win streak at home uh, for playing on Friday the 13th. Uh, overall, their record for playing on any any day of the week that is a 13, I think is 34 and 13. <laughs> so it's pretty... And the guy that plays number 13 is pretty good. He's all right. We've had a few good number 13s on this team. A couple. Yes, exactly. We've had one on this show. And the very first person to wear a 13 for the Eskimo? Thir- thir- the very first? Yes. I have no idea. Larry Highball. Oh, that's oh, actually yeah, a very good one. No, I didn't know that he was the first. He was. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, he was he wore right. it in his second year. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was pretty yeah, he good. He worked out okay. Yeah, he, he did all right. He was okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so let's go to our CFPN game preview where we're going to mash everything together. Uh, we're going to bring in a new podcaster as we do each week uh, with back to back, of course, against the Argos. I thought we'd bring in one from one of the podcasts that covers more of the full CFL uh, in Rouge Radio. Uh, and being that they are off this week and he needs to chat some football, we need to welcome back Tony Allen. Uh, th- welcome back to the Turf District, man. Ah, Thanks a lot for having me. Absolutely. How are things? Oh, you know they're going pretty good. It's a little, uh, it's a little lonely when your your podcast partner decides to go on vacation <laughs> in the middle of the season. I mean, we only do the show in the summertime, and this is when he takes his holidays. So, <laughs> from, from that standpoint, I've been I've been chomping at the bit to get on at least one podcast. So, thanks for having me. But other than that, no, I just got off a mini vacation of my own, seeing how Dults was out and. Spent some time in Calgary. I love that city and did Callaway Park in the zoo. I saw the pandas. Of course, yes. Very important. How can you not turn down pandas? They're adorable. Adorbs. <laughs> Extra points for shortening it up. Kayla's nodding yeah. her head. That's very good. Adorbs. <laughs> Andrew's seething. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Um, I I want to um I thought when we had you on here, just because obviously we're you know, we're not gonna talk uh, we're going to do, we are, we are going to talk some Eskimos and Argos, but, uh, being that you guys kind of cover the whole league. So tell uh, people a little bit about Rouge Radio, just if they're not listening already. Oh yeah. Rouge Radio is a, you know, it, it's hosted by two guys who have a uh, team affiliations. Ones they cheer for me being, uh, from Calgary Stampeder territory and Robert Dalton, Dalton out West that uh, covers the Winnipeg Jets. And I mean, I think it's fun. Why not have uh, allegiance? I don't think it proves anything by being Mr. Serious and neutral. It adds to the fun, but we take a whole league wide view of everything. And, you know, despite some beliefs, we try and, and keep it as honest we can and for what we see on the football field. But I mean, Dalton and I, man, I think, I think he and I were talking, we've got to be at least five or six seasons in now doing this together after a third person kind of introduced us into the podcast. Awesome. That is fantastic. Uh, Well, tell us a little bit here. um, Kind of, I mean, we're four weeks in. What has been your biggest surprise in the CFL so far? How boring the games are. We were... (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) I am one who really defends this league as much as possible. And obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt like the last two or three seasons... We start every year like, oh, my God, these games are so good. These games are so good. And this year it's like, well, that's not good. Well, that game wasn't fun. Well, that was a pretty boring game. So that's been the biggest surprise is that it's just the games have not been fun or, or entertaining. Well, they, a, they, are if you're, they are if you're cheering for the team that's blowing the other team out. But other than <laughs> that, that true. yeah, then it's been a lot of defensive football early and a lot of execution Lots mistakes. of mistakes. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed that a lot. Yeah, so I, I mean, I honestly don't know what the, uh, the deal is. I don't know if the, the cracking down on letting coaches fish for calls is affecting the entertainment somehow. I don't know what happened to a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the entertainment of the game, but right now it's just one team goes out there and slaps the other one around <laughs> the football field, or they both try and stink the joint out. But, I mean, two weeks ago when, what was it, Calgary and Ottawa play a stinker, and then just Saskatchewan and Hamilton, they, Hamilton. Yeah. they just decided they would play an even worse game of football. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> and then it's in like, but, Toronto, we're like, watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah hold, hold my, my beer. beer. <laughs> yeah. It's like the next game. It's like, man, this game stinks worse than a dead skunk that crawled out of the ass of another dead skunk. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just hoping it'll get better. That's what you're saying. Yes, let's just hope. Is that what they can I think if, so. If if they get worse, I will be so heartbroken. So hopefully the games can only get better. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> do you want, all right, uh, let's uh, let's actually. I do want Mike's to ask rolling this. around on the floor. I'm laughing. waiting for. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm. I don't know if I'm setting up a Tony Allen rant here or not. Yes, but, please. Um, <laughs> we're. What is your take on the Toronto Airhorn fan? Actually, I didn't see enough of the game because, again, I was in Calgary and right. we were at Callaway Park. So a lot of it I didn't actually see. So most of my knowledge of it was just people unleashing <laughs> on social media. I haven't seen this since Vuvuzelas in the 2010 World Cup. But if anything could match Vuvuzelas, it apparently it was this guy. I, I hadn't heard any of it. And based on the rants, apparently I did not want to know what was going on. No, I, I was waiting. If you had watched it, I was waiting for you to lose your mind over this because it was just constant and it was annoying it for wasn't everybody. Constant. That's so oh. no, it was during the oppositional defense. Let's not get dramatic. It wasn't constant. But oh, it felt like it was constant. Watch so soccer. I heard it in my Watch ears soccer. when he wasn't blowing the horn. That's yeah. how constant that's, it was. You just have to not think about it. Like. Oh my god! I couldn't. I couldn't imagine having to be in the. We're stadium. grumpy old men. That's right. Apparently, That's the whole of Twitter is, except for me. I was n- the only well, one a, not, you're not bothered. An old man. And <laughs> so the rest of Twitter is like yeah, the only we're all fe- young females. <laughs> all the younger ones are on Snapchat. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or as Morley would call it, the Snappy. Snappy That's box. Right. Snappy box. Yeah, exactly. And what I don't. And here's the other thing: if it was that bad, why wouldn't you turn the volume off? Exactly. That's of your TV. True. I just exactly people complaining just about it. muted. See, people complaining about it, it's like that's the meme of the guy on the motorcycle sticking the stick in his own bicycle spool <laughs> right. and exactly. being like fire trucking horn guy. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Benavides. Uh, yeah, and so does everyone else, so you might as well jump on board. Um all right, let's talk a little uh Esks and Argos uh, to try and set up this game and uh and, and kind of where things go. Um now I know you didn't catch as much of the game this past week, but um what uh, from what you've seen out of Toronto and what you've seen out of Edmonton, what what are you kind of looking for in this game this week? Well, these are two teams, I think, so far. Edmonton has uh, very much underperformed to what we think they were doing. I know in our Eskimos, uh, nine teams in nine weeks, mm-hmm. I did nothing but beam about how unstoppable this Eskimo team was. So did uh, we, I so did we. For- <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think my record was almost fourteen and four. I, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I just thought this was going to be an Edmonton team that would come out and shoot the lights out, like injuries on defense or not. This was an amazing Eskimos team, and if they had to make up by scoring more touchdowns, then keep scoring touchdowns. Like it didn't seem like it was going to be a, a, a club that was going to be having that problem. They still had the receiving weapons. I know my joke was. All last year, my reoccurring joke was, you know, how when is someone going to realize that when Mike Riley gets in trouble in a game, he's just going to bomb it 50 <laughs> yards downfield to Zilstra, and boom, look at that. The Eskimos won the football game again. And, and uh, I mean, they definitely tried that, I believe, in the game against uh, Hamilton, where by the fifth time they tried to pull it off and it got picked off. Well, surprise, you might be changing the receiver running straight up the field, but we kind of know it's coming. So I, I am surprised that Edmonton is not really dominating the way we thought they were. And Toronto was such an awkward football team to call from the beginning. Again, referring back to our nine teams in nine weeks, this was a team that I said I didn't believe last year. I didn't even believe them after they won the Grey Cup. Because if you look at that football game based on the stats and didn't show the score, that wasn't a team that was good enough to win the Grey Cup. This was not one of the situations where... The Stampeders pooped the bed against the Red Blacks, and the Red Blacks made them pay on every every chance they could. This was a team where the Calgary Stampeders scored up twice, and Toronto <laughs> scored on both of those 
It's true. Screw ups. Yeah. So it was like, what the hell is like, you've got, you look at the yard is like over 300 and some yards in offense. And I mean, so that's why I didn't even truly believe that the Argonauts after they won the gray cup, just everything fell in their way. And there's no greater equalizer than snow. So. Coming into the season, I had no, I had no real expectations for the Toronto Argonauts to really be anything. I still think we're seeing an Argonauts team that we think they should be not dominating. They somehow snuck out a week because, you know, they've got their secret weapon, the end zone turf, and <laughs> which is, I don't know, apparently uh-huh. some sort of performance enhancer that the league hasn't called them out on here yet. So we'll see what happens when it switches back to Edmonton. So I, I really don't expect Toronto to be anything more than a 500 club. And that, and that, I think that's fair. I think that's kind of where most of us kind of had this game nine, going. Nine, yeah. yeah, somewhere in that in, well, in, in that team. And and for the game, I mean, I think what you just described as far as the Grey Cup last year, that same thing just happened this past Saturday where Snatched you look at the stats. The jaws yes, of victory. Exactly, where they – they had a chance to to actually win this and put up numbers on the board, but couldn't finish and get the touchdowns. And then when Toronto had the chance, they did. And I don't know if you're a Simpsons fan. It's like the Argonauts are the Homer Simpson to your Frank Grimes. <laughs> oh, like, Grammy! They're not wow. even good enough to play football. Come on! <laughs> not even- it's a competition for children. Stop cheering for him. Yeah, that is if you're a Simpsons fan and get the reference. I it's a contest it, for children. I get it. Yeah. He's kicking their butt. You go, Homer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> of course, Joe gets it. Yes, yeah. of course. Um, Joe, looking at this game, uh, what what were you looking for as far as the uh, as where we sh- where does the where do the Eskimos go from this to actually have a better game this week? Uh, pretty much the the you know com- you know finish what you start you know. The, you know, we've got to start, like you were saying, even on Twitter, like we got to start past our 25-yard line. That would be nice. Um, and, and there were a few possessions. I mean, the big thing, obviously, is when we get in into Argo's territory and, you know, get into scoring position and into whatever, what does Rob Black call it? The green the zone? green zone. When everybody else in the world calls it the red zone. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we uh, we we just got to execute and we got to we got to score points. We can't walk away with field goals because um, we can't do onside kicks all the time. So if we get a field goal, you yeah, one too. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's we. That's the biggest thing. Like it was very on Mike Riley to not complete. You know, you know, make you know score points when we're in the in you know scoring yeah, when position, we're there. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's got to happen. Absolutely, Kayla. Well. Just to go off that, he can only do so much. I mean, the receivers <laughs> kind of have to catch the ball too. Like, what? You can't, no, uh, right? Push up, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, that secondary just blows me away, and not in a good way. Like, I feel like JC Sher um, was the only one not like doing everyone else's job, and it's like, oh, for God and. I'm not even. I'll let you do Edwards because I know you want to. Oh do yeah, Edwards. I'll, I'll talk about that. But, the, yeah. Oh my gosh, with the zone coverage, like I can't even anymore. I can't even like. But our secondary is not Sherman. talented. And, like, we can't do anything. It's so conservative. It's so boring and bland. Like I swear, no one has to steal his playbook. They can just watch every other game and oh, they're just gonna play his zone and kind of just twaddle around well, and run not to tackle. the holes that are in the middle well, of your a, zone yeah. and we'll catch the ball. Uh, well, and and to my point earlier that we talked about in the show uh the defense only gave up 20 points though just gonna say we, we like, because that and, line was incredible yeah, but we but if you put have a defense put 20 points on the board you should win the game yeah right, well no Tony? i'm not making excuses i'm just saying that the secondary drives me crazy yeah so this game you're looking for a better secondary i'm like well i'm looking for a better team <laughs> Oh my! Oh my! This well, is going to be a long. Everyone has to improve. Show. Everyone has to improve. Like you can't deny that. I mean, even Sean missed a field goal, yeah. right? So everyone has to improve. Yeah. That's just the nature of football. Like, you're not going to win if you don't improve during the season. Absolutely, absolutely. Super fan. This we, game. We got the stinker out of the way. We've been win lose win lose win lose. So I guess we're going to win. So this is a win. That's Great. right. Just I like put the, way in the you books think. already. That's perfect. As long as the Riders and the Lions keep losing. You know, we have a shot at <laughs> the playoffs. But the, but the, riders, but the riders won. won. 
Oh my. Yeah, but everyone's a two and two right now except for BC and, and Calgary, Calgary. So yeah, that's. I guess that's uh, reason. We still have the tiebreaker. Uh, yeah, they're, we don't know. Yeah. We don't pay attention to them. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're somewhere up the there. The best regular season team ever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. They're three and zero oh, as they should be. They'll be. They'll finish the season at fifteen and three and lose. That's uh, that's what they do. So they're very good at it. Um, <laughs> Talent <laughs> is innumerable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony, if there was a, a player on either team, Eskimos, Argos, that you would kind of be watching for having a big game, who would you be looking at? Uh, well, Argonauts' 13th man is their end zone turf, <laughs> but they won't have him there for this game. Nice. I like that. Or will And it. honestly, and you know what? He was the uh, big reason anyone really ever talked about Toronto last year. He was a big part of their off uh, season and Wilder jr. Is just, he's going to be a guy that always grabs your attention in Toronto. And there's no reason to think they're not going to lean on him. Uh, Franklin is still going to need his we- ease his way into this offense. I'm not saying he's completely inexperienced. You've got to use, you know, treat him with, you know, with, with you know, baby gloves or anything like that, but they'll still try and protect him as much as they can. So, uh, after 120 yards last week, I would see the Argonauts just basically having to lean him, lean on him again heavily going into Edmonton because it's still not going to be an easy place to play, even though the Eskimos are the only team in the West that hasn't beaten an Eastern team this year. It's very true. Very true. Joe? Uh, I completely agree with Tony. Um, Wilder is going to have to see more of the ball for him. Um, and sadly there isn't really much to you know in the you know the the receiving core for toronto right right like i mean you've got sg green you've got a Mar- uh, monty edwards guys like that but i mean they weren't very effective last game so i think they're gonna have to rely on on wilder quite a bit um and as for the eskimos i i it's it's i i, I want to see more cj gable going to you know going to mike's um, logic of you know run that damn ball right yeah. so we spawn <laughs> so we 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 had to make that but you know credit to to Toronto's defensive line mm-hmm. last game they were getting through so uh, we just got to make sure that we can actually get that run game going to balance out our offense a little more absolutely Kayla oh, you got to shake up Franklin I hate to say it but man even in the when he was uh, getting pressured in the pocket he still like looked pretty cool and collected and then he can scramble away so easy he's pretty agile and quick we know this already yes um i don't know i uh, cover the receiving core like oh my gosh (laughs) all right fair enough (laughs) i I mean we've played this team once now we're gonna play them again so i want to see our defense do a little more match coverage Mm -hmm. uh, a little more man uh, they should be way more comfortable. They know exactly what they're going to face, and get that way you can get some more pressure from that front four, front seven. Yeah, yeah, we need more pressure from the front seven. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the offense is going to pick up. Well, Riley was just totally pissed off. And, mm-hmm. and oh yeah, we yeah. saw that what happened against Hamilton and what happened in the bounce back game. I think we're going to see the same thing in this game. Yeah, I, I think, and I think receivers as well. I mean, you got to catch the ball. Like, yeah. I mean, you said that already, Kayla. Right? Like, so many push ups in this last game, it was crazy. So we need to have, have a little really more. good chest muscles now. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Somebody and, catch and the ball. again, create some lanes for Gable to get through too. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean. Yep. You can run all you want, but if you have a blockade of people, you can't run backwards. Lat- running laterally is quite dangerous if you're not as fast. Like Gable just isn't as fast as some of the, the running backs in this in this um, league anymore. So you know, he needs a hole. He needs, he needs a through. hole. He needs yeah. a hole. Yeah, I I 100% agree. Absolutely. Uh, All right, Tony, we're making our other picks here on the pod, but there's two other games this week. And because you cover the league, I'd like to know what your picks are for those games. I'm pretty sure I know which one you're going to pick in Calgary versus Ottawa. But who do you have in that one? I think it's funny you have me on the week where there's the fewest games. Only three (laughs) this week. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just the way it worked. (laughs) Uh, But I don't know. I I was talking with with Daltz here uh, over the weekend when we're kind of early coming up we do our three down hot takes and and one of the things I did think was interesting and I kind of took my my stab uh, at the Eskimos being the only ones not beating an eastern team this year but if you look how the season started we've had 12 head-to-head matches between the east and the west and we probably all started I'll include myself I'm not going to make it sound like I was better than anybody but we basically all started talking about how much the 
West was dominant over the East. Look at this Western Conference. This is this Western Division is ridiculous, opposed to this paltry Eastern Division over here. But right now, the West only leads that head-to-head battle seven five, and three of those wins come solely from the Calgary Stampeders. So that's one more win in the rest of the West, and then none for Edmonton. So I don't think the East. Obviously, the in, people would assume I come in and say the Calgary Stampeders are going to walk all over the Red Blacks on this one because they're 3-0, and but it's not exactly like Calgary has exactly asserted dominance over the Eastern Division themselves. And this is, I think, an Ottawa team where people have high hopes for. They've looked pretty solid so far, and Calgary seems to have troubles when they head out East. Uh, right now, Trevor Harris seems to have that kind of confidence he had a few seasons ago when right out of the gate we were already talking MOP selections because Harris looks so good. But they do look like they have a good team. They have their holes, their their weaknesses everywhere else. But going into Ottawa and coming off a bye week for the Stampeders, I mean, I heard you know a lot of the players take off. Bo Levi was in Washington for a while. So who knows how quickly they got their heads back into the game. And I want to take the Red Blacks in this one. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm a little surprised. All right. And uh, then the Saturday, uh, the rematch, Winnipeg in BC, but now in BC. Oh, BC just looks like they're picking up where they left off last year. I would like to become, I would really like to come on here and say, listen, BC's, you know, doing great. But I was a huge Jonathan Jennings supporter when he came onto the scene. Boy, it looked like we were going to get good things out of him. I tried to defend him all last season as well because we just need new good quarterbacks that would turn heads. And I really wanted Jonathan Jennings to be one of those guys. But again, it just looks like, a lot of the same old from last year, and you start having to wonder if maybe it's time to give up on that Jennings experience in BC. So we'll see what happens there. Again, I still want all the best quarterbacks we can have in the Canadian Football League, regardless of what my team is and who is I like. It's a better league when you've got exciting quarterbacks. I think Wally Buono is going to be in a little bit of trouble now because you can't take a step back and start building your team around Travis Lule again. I think Buono needs to start Lule and go back to him and see what he can pick up. But unfortunately, this is right now with what just BC puts on the field. It looks exactly the same as last year. And I don't think this is going to be the swan song we wanted for Wally Buono. So not as difficult for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in this one. Again, it's been a boring season. I see this one just tagging along with that one and saying Winnipeg wins this one quite easily. Awesome. Well, Tony, we love having you on uh, to chat football for sure. So uh, let everybody know again where they can find your podcast and listen to more of you and Dalt. Uh, the easiest place to find us is always Twitter. That's where Dalt sends it out. And then you can always find the leak there. But we are on your iTunes. Uh, there's other ones that I'm too old to understand <laughs> what they are or where they are. The best thing to do is go to the Twitters and follow at Rouge Radio. And every Thursday morning, you'll find the link to the podcast and, of course, how to follow uh, Dalts at Rouge Dalts and me at uh, Tony Rouge Radio. And, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy what you hear because uh, we try to we try to have some fun on there, too, and talk serious football. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. We really appreciate you coming on. Hey, no problem. We'll look forward to the end zones being sponsored by WD-40 in Edmonton <laughs> this weekend. As the grounds crew will be out there laying it on thick. Looking forward to it. Thank you again to Tony for joining us. Uh, now, let's. we talked about what we need to do in this game to actually pull off the win, but we didn't talk about who we are going to be watching and who we are going to be picking. So, Joe, you are the guest. We'll start with you. Who, Which player are you going to keep your eye on, and uh, who are you picking for this game? Uh, I'm, for watching, I'm going to watch our... Um our offensive line, hopefully to open up holes for CJ to, mm-hmm. to uh, have a game like he did against BC um, to balance that offense. And um, I think I picked the Eskimos to win this one. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my pick? Um, I had it. Yeah. I'm pretty I, sure you did. I saw yeah. a check mark. Yeah. I saw a check mark. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. All right. I picked him to win. Perfect. Yeah. Kayla. Yeah. Uh, for who I'm, I'm going to continue watching the Baz. All right. Um, hoping for him to, Dominant. Well, JC had the most. Um, um, he had that great stop on the uh, third one. Tackles? Eight yeah. tackles. Thank you. Yes, that's what he does. Yeah, that's, that's what he. Does. That's what he does for a living. He, does he tackles yeah. people. He does tackle. body 
<laughs> Squishies. Um, and hopefully Quaker will be back. Physical bad. hugs. <laughs> Physical hugs. <laughs> that's the scariest thing you've ever said. Eight. I like eight squishies. Which is impressive. That's, the, that's one one. Huh? That's impressive. That yeah. That's the scariest thing he's ever said. Physical yeah. hugs. You don't read a lot of his Twitter, obviously. <laughs> no, no. I, see, I see his little icon. I'm like, keep scrolling. Yeah, <laughs> I do that to my own Twitter. I said, what now? You're like, what an idiot. Oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, so um, the Baz. Yes. And hopefully Quaiko will be here. All right. We'll be back. Sorry, and mumbled there. And you're picking there. the Eskimos, I I kind of have to. All right, yeah. I like wow. when you knock on wood here. It's very echoey. It's very echoey, yes. Super fan? <laughs> we do it a lot. Uh, I'm going to be watching our linebacking core versus one James <sighs> Wilder Jr. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to see a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we can shut him down early, maybe that's going to force Franklin to go to the air a little more. And yep. Then he has to face our second. Never mind. Um, <laughs> get, well, either Kayla's way. Kayla's favorite position. In our yeah. Second. Um. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of where I'm going to be focusing. And of course, I always focus on the uh, offensive line and running backs on the offensive side yes. of all of it. Uh, of course. Yeah, especially this time uh, with the way they had their way with us on in the running game, we've, we've got to be better. All right. We'll be there for support. Yes, uh, I am going to be uh, watching Nate Bahar this week because uh, I, I do want to see him get a few more touches and he's getting the time now. So now is the time to show that you can actually – be that fourth guy um you know we've we've got walker we've got stafford we've got duke that are all going and seem to be doing i mean other than the push-up side of things they are catching and doing their thing and nate hasn't got that first touchdown yet and i i I want him to get that out of the way close so very close so i I, i'm watching Nate. i i I had to laugh because dave campbell was dealing with some people on twitter about nate bahar yeah and yeah you know the guy can't fault him for having a crappy agent, right? Right. And the whole holdout thing, and people are still dwelling on it. that. It's like the guy literally won us the game in Winnipeg. Yeah. Yeah. He's been active in the offense, very active in the offense, giving his opportunities. He's Last kind of, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's starting to show that he is worthy of that first round pick that we got him in, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I want, I want him to have some success. I want him to, to just not catch too much. Down. We want some bat in there. Why? Bat. Oh, bat. Bat. Not Sorry, bad. Bad. I'm like, what are you bat. talking about? Bazzy? Yeah. No. Bat. We want to see Bazzy some on the man. Yes. Yeah, some Batman. Well, yes. maybe yeah. I just do. But, so. but he's again, it's, it's, it's a ratio thing. So yeah, they'll have to take out an American. Unless, to, unless Arjun is all of a sudden feeling better than, yeah. Then maybe it goes back the other way. We'll have to see how it goes. But that's, <laughs> or we can get Kwaku back in this area as well, right? Or so. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, because even when because the reason that we we flipped the ratio was for that corner. Position. No, but if we oh, have because track of this? we had Rivers go in, so yeah, it's an American yes. starter. So if yes. Kwaku goes in with milk truck backing him up, right? Then we have an eighth non-import spot. Yeah. So, so then, so that, yeah, right. so you can have another international, one. right? Right. So you might have. To, I need okay. to be taught this nonsense. Okay. Well, we'll go over that a little bit later. So, does uh, so and many obviously, we're that both picking here. the Eskimos. I assumed. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I'll I, pick them. The, in the, in uh, the Riley back. comes back, and again, win, lose, win, lose. Win. That's right. Hey, it's, it's win time. It's win time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. We'll go. Don't with ask that. me what next week. But, uh, uh, well, we're on a bye, so that'll mess it all up. Yeah. If we don't, if we lose next week, we're in trouble. <laughs> if anyone can do it, Chris Edwards is still going to get a penalty. Yeah. So <laughs> that's just how it works. One every week. Um, now we have two other games that we need to pick this week. Uh, Thursday night, Calgary versus Ottawa. This one is in Ottawa. Kayla, we start with you. Yelza. Oh, this is a tough one. I keep going back and forth because it's in Ottawa, which gives them a definite leg up for mm-hmm. sure. But it's Calgary. Calgary coming off a of bye week. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, I still got to go with my gut and say Calgary. All right. And if enough. I'm wrong, super duper. Okay, yeah, that's right. Super fan? The language on this one. I know. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> this All one is, again, I, I, I mean, I predicted Ottawa to win the last time they played Calgary. Yeah. And uh, didn't go so that well. didn't work out so nope. well. So uh, I figure eventually uh, I got to be right. So... Um, <laughs> The law of averages. <laughs> yes. So, uh, again, like Kayla said, this is in Ottawa. Uh, they do play each other quite well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think one of these days are going to pull it out. So let, let's go with the Red Blacks. That's funny. The, I did this. I thought the same thing. I'm like, it's it's just that time. I'm, I'm going to pick the Red Blacks <laughs> to win at home. So that's, uh, you know, and again, you know. And I, if we're right, yay. 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 That's right. Joe? 
I, I'm with you guys. I, I picked the Red Blacks, and mostly because has there ever been a undefeated team within the 18 or in the you know the 18 season or 18 no. game? Yeah, no, there's never been. So. The last time it was there was 12 Whoa, games, we're only yeah. and they didn't have to play us. So, I mean, yeah. so, so, so Calgary's right. eventually got to lose. So if this is their one, Tony's going to love that I said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, oh, podcaster oh, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, podcaster Ryan will yeah. love that if this is their one game. I, I, I really like what Ottawa's been doing this year. I think they've looked strong in the games they have played. Um, so, yeah, I think they're they they're going to pull it out to to beat Calgary. If right. it's their one, their one's going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah so. I, that's very true. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'd how like to see them play yeah. Winnipeg. Yeah, well, that's that'll be, be an interesting one. game when yeah. that comes to yeah. when it comes time to do that. Uh, okay, and then Saturday we have the rematch of last week as well, where we've got Winnipeg taking on BC in Vancouver. Super fan. Yeah, home field advantage isn't going to help very much. Yeah. Um, uh, Nichols came back, and it seemed like he was picking up like where he left off there. I mean, there was a little bit of rust in, in some of the plays, but overall I think this, he just made a strong offense stronger. That offensive line is still phenomenal, and yeah. they're – the lines are still a problem in BC, so and that's where this game is won. Yeah. So, uh, sorry to the uh, Lions faithful that are going to be in BC place, but I think it's a, a bomber win. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm just going to say ditto because that's pretty <laughs> much where I was at. Joe, I'm nodding my head. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> the same breaks, thing. Yeah. Okay. Kayla. Wally deserves so much better. <laughs> oh, it's. I don't except kn- against us. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what it is. I think it's because of Wally. There's just something about. Him that I just you just want to. It's like everybody's. He is everybody's hug. grandpa or something. I don't know. <laughs> physical hug. <laughs> he is an exception. You are not. <laughs> I just have a soft spot for the lions. I can't. Ex- I don't know why. Don't ask me. Don't at me. Okay. But uh, I, I bombers. I don't see how they can. And if we're wrong, yay! Yay! That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. Great, I mean, yeah. it would make the West way more interesting. I hope I am wrong. We are yes. wrong because it would make the West a heck of a lot more interesting and cool. give us a little bit of a. Okay, that game. That remember that right. Argo game. Scratch yeah. it. Yeah, that'd be great mm-hmm. if they could do that. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yes, please. Yeah, exactly. Now Lule, they did say is uh, working with the doctor to see what his knee can take. Uh, uh, yep. See if he'd be able to. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there might be there might be a, a Lule sighting. Uh-huh. We'll see how it goes. Yep. He's a nice guy, though. I really it's, like him. He is very nice. Yes. Um, all right. Let's talk fantasy, Kayla. Tell us about your fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> that's, uh, duh, that's the After Dark podcast. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, you know what I forgot to say? I forgot to say for our leader for our Pick'em this week is uh, Kimmy D. One, two, three is oh. her name. She's obviously a Jackson 5 fan. Kimmy D. One, two, three. I think that's what it is. Uh, I am, um, <laughs> I'm just making it up. Yeah. Uh, I'm 44th, super fan, you're 53rd, and Kayla, you're 59th. So we have some well, room to make up. Actually, I thought I'd be at the bottom right now. Oh, no, you're 59th. So that's not too bad. No, my pickups last week were just uh, probably better than Chad, but. Well, no, we'll fine. see. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, fantasy leader this week is again Matt Pretty. He's uh, just Matt killing Pretty. it right there. Uh, I'm 18th. Mike, you're 33rd. Oh, I'm bad, yeah. I'm not um, existent. Now, there's no... But still better than me. So that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, there's, uh, there's no Montreal or Saskatchewan to pick against this week, so... Bomber D. Joe, do you have any uh, guys, Any guys? anything you're looking at as far as fantasy to pick up? Um, I, I, I took Wilder against our run defense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not a bad pick. And Sad. and my, my, my bargain pick of the week is actually Bryant Mitchell. Yes. Yep. Um, I think he's going to actually have a I'm not gonna say a breakout game, but I think he's gonna see a little more balls thrown in his direction. All right. Uh super fan? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I'm out no. of booze. <laughs> I think <laughs> that we're gonna be seeing that was a sad face. <laughs> I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of uh just like in the last game uh, the the bombers that are former Lions really stuck after their old team. I think they're going to do even more so Ooh. at home in front of that faithful. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to see, uh, I mean, we had what, two interceptions from Big Hill and uh, some decent yardage from Andrew Harris. I picked Harris this week. I'm going to pick him again this yeah. coming week. Big Hill needs to go back to the NFL. I thought I was yeah, happy. I'm not so happy back anymore. Back to the Saints? Yes, yeah, please. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's a tough one. Um, I, I, I know this is going to sound funny after all that we've already talked about, but 
I am finding a way to put Mike Riley on my fantasy roster because right. he is going to be outright pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and when he is, he tends to just have one of those kind of games. So uh, Who's he going to throw to? Uh, probably to Bryant Mitchell, like Joe just Duke. said. Duke, definitely. But Duke's price went up big time this week with yeah. only three games. Uh, he's he's seven grand now, I think, or 68? Uh, 62, just 62. under 60. Okay. So it's 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 climbing. So, uh, that's why, that's that's why, that's that's why I said Mitchell's there. a good pick because yeah. he's, he's under 4,000. He's yeah. 30. I think Stafford's in that four yeah. to five grand range as well. So there's, yeah, there's but Bahar's only 2,500 bucks. So yeah. there's, there's tons of options. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, those are all great options. So, uh, but yeah, I think, I think if you don't put Riley in there, then you're missing out on yeah. something. Yeah, you got to yeah. get a couple of those really, really cheap guys, those 3,000 right. to 2,500 guys to get Riley on your roster every week. And there are those guys that can get you the points, but the points that run. The, the, but even if they get two points, Riley's going to get you twenty or thirty. Like exactly, so it balances right. out. Yeah, right? it balances yeah. out so. to fifteen a guy. Right? Yeah, exactly. So that's not not mm-hmm. a bad choice at all. Um, all right. Well, this has been uh, fun. Thank you, guys. Cathartic. For I, I think it is. I feel better. Really? I don't know about you, I don't. but uh, well, you need to feel better. We need to be ready. It's like some more tonic. Yeah. That's why I'm not angry. Angry juice. Right? Exactly. Angry. Uh, Joe, thank you for coming down and uh, and chatting with us once again. No, um, tell everybody where they find you on Twitter and all those Hopefully. fun things. Yeah, I'm, I'm predominantly on Twitter. <laughs> um, at Balaneski, B-A-L-A-N-E-S-K-I. Um, follow me at your own discretion. Um, at your own peril. At your own peril, yeah. I, I say stuff that probably should, you know, get me blocked most days. But. Really? I feel like you're pretty tame. I'm, yeah. I, I've, uh, I don't know. Fatherhood's I've, melody out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and then my little incident with Deron Carter and all yeah. that stuff. But yeah, still. Who hasn't? You yeah. must tell me about this after. Oh, I will. It's, yeah. It was great. It was. Yeah. It was Podcast funny. after dark. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Webmistress, where does everybody find you? So uh, you can find it. me on Twitter at Duchess Lombardi. Perfect. Super fan. You can find me at 56 Parkies. Awesome. And you can find me at Free Delicious. And of course, find the show at Ask Empire Pod. Uh, thank you again to Natea J and to Tony Allen from Rouge Radio for joining us. And of course, thank you as always to our sponsor, United Construction Company. Check out their website at unitedconstruction.ca. You down with UCC? Yeah, yeah you, you know, know me. me. Uh, let us know if you want to come to West of Us in the Park. Make sure, uh, of course, you find us on all of our social channels that you'll find on the links on Ask Empire. Ca. We will be back next week to recap this week's game and, of course, a little bye week fun. And uh, we're hoping to have an alumni on for next Ooh. week for a little bit longer chat. Uh, so, is it time to get those penalties under control? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Can all three phases get back to executing? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And are we ready to go into the bye week on a winning note? Absolutely. absolutely. For Joe, Commissioner Kayla, and Superfan Mike, I'm Andrew. Remember, you can't catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter.